everyone. Rob from Power Station Studios here again with Paul Cronk, our chief engineer. And we got Stephen Ludwig there behind the camera hanging out with us here. And uh, we got a new toy to play with here. So without further ado, the trusty old knife. The and knife is old, by the way. We need to keep knife. I like my knife. Leave it alone. <laughs> Don't hate my knife. Don't knife shame. Don't <laughs> knife shame me. <laughs> All right. So, we're going to pull this out. Now, I do know what this is, obviously, but uh, I got a chance to demo this recently. This was sent to me from uh, Langston down at uh, Handsome Audio. Hey, guys, down there. Um, this, is, this is a toy, a tool, rather, that absolutely blew me away. And I am so excited to have this here. Not the bubble wrap. The bubble wrap thing, I think that's becoming a theme in these videos. <laughs> yeah. All right, so without further ado, uh, just kidding. <laughs> Here, we'll do it this way. No, I'm just All right. And we're going to pull out the Zulu. Check this out. So, more bubble wrap. So it is approved. Here's the cool thing. Check this out. It's a Zulu pin. Yes. And I will wear this. Actually, I'm going to put this over here because I don't want to lose that. But check this thing out. Now, this is a super robust piece of metal. It's got a great little thing. You can mount it to a mic stand. But what does it do? The question is not what does it do. It's what doesn't it do. This is called the Make Everything Sound Good box. Um, kidding aside, the Zulu is basically a, a passive analog tape simulator. And it simulates the different uh, analog, different decks, the different BIOS. Uh, it has an enhance function and a headroom function. Um, it's very simple. It's got an input and an output. And then you can set the different functions. Everything is passive. So there's no plug or any power that goes through this, but it goes through a series of these really cool, sophisticated transformers that Langston designed himself. Um, and uh, these are part of the transformers that are also used in the Ericsson Labs microphones that we love so much. Um, I would go in and talk about all the details from a technical standpoint, but I wouldn't do it justice and I'd just bore you guys to death. I'm just saying that this thing is like sonic crack um, we still spin analog tape here, but in a lot of times what we'll do is the way we've kind of set Power Station Pompano here up is we can interact very easily in the analog domain, digital domain. We can wheel in tape machines, uh, MIDI, this and that. Um, but this is even, it's just with a simple I.O., it's even easier. Um, you want to put that analog warmth and that analog fatness or character or punch. You want to bring out harmonics. Um, one of the things I use this for, especially, you know, when we get a lot of people sending us tracks for me to mix, and a lot of these guys are using digital, you know, digitally created instruments, uh, whether it be synths or basses or what have you. Um, the problem, the biggest problem I have with these instruments is, hey, they sound great, yes, but as soon as you start putting EQ on them, nothing really happens. There's no harmonic content. Yes, you'll take one frequency and bring it up but it doesn't have the harmonic content. I, I mean, I can run it here on this Neve console and I'm sitting here turning things to, you know, to 11, but uh, it, it just doesn't have that, there's no harmonics there. So all of a sudden, that's how you fix it, is you grab a Zulu. I'm yeah. telling you, you grab a Zulu. Um, and uh, you plug this thing in and I, I don't even look at, you know, there's, there's manuals online that show you what everything does and what the different settings are, the, you know, the low, the pro, the high, you know, high resolution decks and different things like a Studer or, or, a, or an Atari or what have you. Um, I just start turning this thing in event and I mean, shit just happens. It's amazing. Um, You've used this quite a lot lately, Paul. Tell me what you've used this thing. Yeah, so obviously like soft synths is a big one, you know, just like you were saying, you go to EQ with soft synths and it's like the, the you know, the, the harmonics just aren't there to, to mess with. Um, and then you, you run it through this and then all of a sudden it puts all that harmonic content there and you actually have stuff to play with. It's, it's also become, even on 
analog, uh, not analog, like acoustic recorded instruments, it's my go-to on horn sections, right? Especially modern, you know, modern recording of horn sections. The reason why old horn sections, part of the reason why they used to sound so good is slamming them to analog tape, right? Yeah, because none of them balance themselves out like they, like they <laughs> everybody thinks they do. No, you slam it to tape, the tape balances, yeah, natural yeah. tape compression. For sure. In a box. Yep. So, so like, you know, you get these, like, modern horn section recordings, and they're nice, and they're bright, and they're crystal clear, but it's like, where's the vibe? Where's the grit? Where's that texture, you know? And so you take that horn section, you bam, slam it through this thing, and then all of a sudden, it just sits in the record like a Motown horn section would, or a Capitol Records horn section would. It's just Bass so guitar weird. sounds really interesting on this thing, and, and yes. I saw you doing it a couple weeks ago. You're running it on the front end going bef to tape. Yes. Pro Tools, I still call it tape. <laughs> forgive me. No, don't forgive me. To tape. Yeah, so it was a, it was like a like an indie rock track, but kind of a modern indie rock track, and uh, and and it was just like we were, the bass player was playing it, and it just awesome bass player, great song, and it was like, all right, this just isn't vibing. Like, how we're not catching the groove on this, what's going on? And then it slammed it through this, added some grit and some fatness and some warmth on it with this thing, and then all of a sudden, it's like it's like he knew exactly what to play. It was incredible. It's, you know, when, when it sounds better, especially when you're tracking, you're gonna perform better. When you hear back better, you're, it's, gonna, it's gonna enable you to perform yeah. better. So this on the front end is amazing tool. Um, one of the things I really like this on, especially on modern rock records and stuff, um, you know, is uh, like, like Stephen, what he and his band, uh, 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 the Rumors Band, uh, which is coming out uh, here soon. You've just got a couple releases ready to roll out the gate here, right? Yeah. Uh, what's the uh, what's the what's the hashtag? Hashtag that band rumors. That band rumors. Hashtag that band rumors. Uh, anyhow. Um, a lot of these guys, Stephen included, they're using a lot of these these modeled guitar, uh, you know, algorithms. On, on his record, we've 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 done several different things, but you know, they use uh, whether it's the the neural or the uh, uh, the STL the STL tones yeah. or 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 even modeling amplifiers or, or preamps like the Axe Effects or the uh, the Kemper the Kemper yeah. and and you know. I, I'm, an, I'm, I'm an avid Axe FX user, and I can dial in some great overtones and harmonics, but, you know, it takes, it takes knowledge, it takes time, and it takes focus. Um, but a lot of these other things, like the neural stuff, it's just you open up the plug-in, you put the guitar in, and you've got insane guitar tones. They sound really good. As a guitar player, I'm probably the most critical when it comes to guitar tones, and I'm blown away with what these companies are doing with technology. Um, the problem is, is that the tones are there, but when you're trying to fit them inside the mix, what ends up happening is those harmonics aren't there. So either A, they're taking up too much space, they're not taking up enough space, uh, they're overlapping and you can't move stuff around. So I've done a couple of ways where I've, I've tracked things through this, I've, I've reamped guitars through this, or what I've done, I've, I've taken my mix, I've, I, my guitar bus, take them to a bus, uh, on the bus, on an insert on the bus, I just slap this guy on there. Dial in, all of a sudden, the guitars open up. And what you actually really hear is, as a guitar player, you guys will understand this. Those of you that aren't guitar players, just, you know, kind of humor me. Um, <laughs> but when you when you start emulating the tape and start dialing this thing in, what you actually, what I actually hear is you actually hear the air, the cone moving, the air moving, being pushed, moving through the cone, or the cone pushing the air, uh, the sound waves through the air, and you hear the sound break up. Yeah. It's a certain thing that it's hard to explain as a guitar player, you know, it just the sound starts to break up at a certain point. That's why everybody tries to emulate all these different speakers. You don't need to do that, just use this. Yeah. So anyhow, um, I have to give one quick disclaimer is, uh, I had mentioned that uh, Langston and the guys were down and, uh, um, you know, gave us a demo of this thing, and, and the truth of the matter is, I bought it on the spot. It was so freaking <laughs> awesome. Uh, I was like, dude, I gotta have this thing. Um, so not only did I got it, we got a second one here because we have two studios in here. We use this so much that it just, it, it was something that needed to be in both rooms. Um, the biggest problem I have now is you guys fighting over the two units, yeah. so. But I, I guess that's a high class problem, but. Uh, Langston, I can't thank you enough for uh, all your support and, and help and all your dedication to, you know, building products just like things like this. And, you know, 
a lot of these guys with these platinum records and all these you know credits and stuff they'll they'll, they'll you know they'll probably vouch for this thing but the reality is is you guys in the project studios now with things like this you have the tools that compete with rooms like this um, it's a simple tool like this that emulates you know almost a million dollar console and, and outboard gear and stuff like that so um, go check it out it's the uh, handsome audio it's the Zulu Z-U-L-U um, just do a Google search I know they're on reverb.com but um, I can't say enough good things about it uh, once again Langston thanks and uh, we'll catch you guys soon <laughs>